Hey guys, welcome to the HVAC Diaries. Can you believe another week has gone by just like that? <laughs> welcome to the HVAC Diaries. This episode, as always, is brought to you by New Calgon. Well, you guys, I think the theme of this week was New Calgon's Turbo Tank which is a portable water sprayer for coil cleaning. I used it at three different locations this week. Actually, one of them was an ice machine that I used the turbo tank to clean the bin on in um, at a rugby club in Stanley Park. And then I used it for two very different coils on a roof. One of them was a micro channel York unit that serves an office building that does heating and cooling. And so I just used water there. And at that location, I had to climb this short roof ladder to get through the roof hatch. And the second condenser coil was for a walk-in cooler at a liquor store. And for them, their equipment is actually located on their neighbors at the old spaghetti factory. And there I have to lug my turbo tank up a staircase through their like manager's office. And then there's a hole in the wall. It's more like a doorway through the wall that I have to climb through to access the units. I also did my monthly filter change at the pub and the liquor store. Actually the same one that I cleaned the condenser coil on. Um, and I also checked their little under counter coolers behind their bar because oh man, that just gets so dirty so quickly as well. And yeah, I did that. But the first HVAC adventure I'm going to take you on during this vlog is the water source heat pump unit that we replaced in the side of very fancy Pilates studio. And it was really tricky. It was a tricky replacement only because of where the unit was located. This unit is located inside their shower change room area. They've undergone a complete renovation. I think that I've actually only been open there for a few months. But before that, they had a massive renovation. They made everything so beautiful and perfect and just really nice with gold finishes on everything. But they built a solid drywall ceiling in the shower room, which A, is kind of weird. But B, they've also, they've hidden the unit. And also because the unit was like cinched up against another wall, we literally had to cut the drywall out of that wall to access the electrical panel. I'm going in that hole right there. And just working with my arms through that hole in the drywall, man, I was so cut up on my arms. I had the tiniest little cuts all over myself. So itchy, so bleh did not really enjoy that job. Regardless, it's still an HVAC adventure, so let's go. We're just grabbing the unit before we head out, and we've taken all the packaging off and the pallet so that it'll fit into our truck. I'm just pushing it to where it needs to go, and Dad opened the door for me. Carefully push it all in. Don't touch anything, don't hit any walls. So we're just gonna park it here for now. So we have marble floors down here that we need to watch out for. Really pretty fixtures. There's a shower behind here. Uh, there's a massive neon sign behind here. This uh, surface that we can't damage. And then the unit, I'm gonna have to go through a, that hole right there. On the other side, there's like a, a laundry room. And that's when I'm gonna have to disconnect all of my power and controls and everything through that hole there. Well, let's go. I'm going in that hole right there. It's a pretty ridiculous situation, especially when you have to pull your electrical panel through a hole in the drywall. But that's what we're working with here, so let's go. These water lines go right through the wall. 
I have never seen that before. So we've done so many of these water source heat pump replacements that we've pretty much got it down pat. I mean, other than the challenges that the location specifically provides. So yeah, I've just got everything disconnected. Both the supply and the return ducts were just so challenging to get disconnected. Especially with that little bench kind of in the way we can't really get close to the wall. And that duct was covered in duct mastic. I had the hardest time getting that undone. Just contorting myself trying to get it done. Then Trevor and I both tried together. Oh man, this is the, the, the mastic I'm talking about. This is after we pulled the unit out. And as always, the star of the show was the Genie pneumatic lift. We could not do these jobs without this thing. I thought this might be a cool angle to get of the unit coming out, but it definitely wasn't. So, sorry about that. It's very awkward. Open it. Uh, yeah, maybe. Okay. All right, well, great success. We got this baby out, and that was a challenge and a half. Oh my goodness. Dad's just kind of strategizing on how we're going to get the next unit in. And Trevor's actually cutting more drywall away. And now we can get rid of this old thing. Oh, okay. I just took this door off completely so that we can have access to this if we ever need to service it. You definitely won't be able to open that door. Well, oh, okay. So, no, I don't think you definitely won't because there's no space for it to move inside oh, where it that's is what I'm saying. so to work on this unit going forward well you i mean you've got your connections up here but if you ever need to well what? well that seems like a problem for another day because she's going up and now that she's safely mounted we can just do everything in reverse we're going to connect the thermostat cable um electrical ducting p drain water lines. My control cable just makes it in. It's a bit of a stretch. Just makes it in there. So we ended up cutting bigger holes so we could access those two water lines. And we've installed two brand new braided hoses for those water lines. And because my hands and arms are the smallest, I get to tighten them up with a double wrench and a backup wrench. Okie dokie, that one is pretty tight. Not really impressed with this whole situation. There she is. Oh, we left our level on there. Whoops. Well, pretty happy that's over with now. It's over and done with. I have now a solo day. I'm gonna go clean coils. I never remembered to add this to my vlogs, but before and after every job, I open my jobber app and I fill it in. So these guys have a hose bib on the side of their building, but unfortunately it doesn't reach to the unit that I'm working on. So I'm gonna use my turbo tank, which I just fill up and then carry up. Whew. All right, I got all of my stuff up through the roof hatch. I'm tired. What I'm doing today is cleaning this microchannel coil. There's two of the exact same units up here. This coil is filthy. You can see all those little bits in there. Um, this one, surprisingly, is not at all. Like, it's totally clear. There's no buildup in there at all. So, I'm gonna leave that guy. But this one I'm gonna rinse. And because it is a microchannel, I am not gonna use any chemicals. I'm going to brush off what I can and then I'm gonna take out the fan 
and then I'm gonna spray from the inside out with my turbo tank, which is right there. Okay, let's go. Before we do any work on these units, especially spraying them with water, start by turning them off, disconnect the power. Because this coil is covered in like pollen-y looking type stuff, pollen and dust, I'm gonna try and brush it off first and get all as much debris and dust I can off of it. But to be honest, it didn't work very well. So let's get the water going. The fan doesn't take very long to take off at all. It's just probably like six screws or something. And then you can just flip it up and turn it on its side. And then you're good to go. I find it easier to actually climb on top of the unit to pull the, f the fan motor off. And there you go. Got my trusty turbo tank. And I'm going to climb right inside this unit. I'm lucky I'm small enough. I can do this. The turbo tank is designed to take fresh water only, so no chemicals inside, which is kind of perfect for this microchannel coil. It requires only water, so that's perfect. If I was going to spray this with any kind of chemical, I would use a hand pump spray, which I'll actually show you later on the second coil cleaning. Look at all that grossness. It's coming out. It's so beautiful. So a little trick is to disconnect this tank, this turbo tank tank from the base, which is I just left here on the, on the roof to make it a little bit easier to carry because it's quite heavy. But I'll tell you, <laughs> it is a workout to bring this thing up a ladder oh, on your shoulders full of water. Oh, I catch my breath for a second. Damn. So I did that four times. I refilled my turbo tank four times and came back up. And yeah, got a pretty good rinse on it. Look at all the grossness on the roof. That's not on the coil anymore. Beautiful. Coil cleaning is so satisfying. I love it. Okay, let's put everything back together. Get that fan back in. Whew. I am pooped. That was like four or five trips up the roof ladder with that full tank of water. <sighs> really got my workout in today. <laughs> okay, back in the truck. And once again, I'll open my jobber app and fill in my little job card. So that's all done by the time I get to my desk. Okay, so coil cleaning number two. This is at the old spaghetti factory where I have to go up that little staircase and out the, out the window. Let's cut power to the unit. We've already spoken about that. So this is where I'm going to use my hand pump because I'm going to use chemicals on this condenser coil. I'm going to be using New Calgon's New Bright condenser coil cleaner, which turns quite foamy once it hits the dirt. It's really satisfying to watch all of that dirt fly away. You can see it's already starting to foam up and it's gonna need like 10 minutes to sit. So while I'm waiting for that, I'm just gonna take a little selfie for you guys. Just, just sitting there. And there you go, that's so glorious. And this is the chemical I'm using, New Bright. It's about ready to be rinsed off, so I'm gonna grab my turbo tank and do that. Oh, it's so beautiful, look at it. All that dirt coming out. So yeah, I'm just going to rinse it away. I had to do maybe five or six trips up the stairs with this turbo tank to rinse all of my chemical off. And look at it go. I honestly would be just so happy with cleaning coils all summer long. And look what a difference. Oh my goodness. I did spend maybe 10 minutes straightening a few of these fins out. But yeah, it's so much better. Okay, so now that the first or the main unit is done, I'm gonna spend probably just a few minutes 
rinsing this coil as well. This is also the same location downstairs, but this one is a lot cleaner looking. So I'm just gonna give her a nice rinse while I'm here. Okay, that was way dirtier than I thought it was gonna be. Wow. So I actually did clean it with some chemicals, but I didn't film any of that. And I have no idea what I'm doing in this clip, but this is my workplace. And I'm finished. <laughs> Now we're driving through Stanley Park. We're heading to a rugby club where we're going to clean an ice machine there. And I wasn't really even going to include this in the vlog because it's quite boring, but the location was really interesting and cool. So obviously they've got a rugby field outside in the back, and then they've got this clubhouse that we're going to go into. They have all this really cool rugby memorabilia from over the years, like a whole bunch of different teams that have come to play here or practice here. And they've got all of their photos and ties and pins and everything. So I'll show you that in a bit. But for now, we're working in this bar. And here is their ice machine. It's, this is actually a brand new ice machine. They've had it there for, I think this is their second year, second season. So as always, we just start by emptying the bin and setting it to clean. And I'm going to use some new Calgon ice machine cleaner. There she is. I always think the inside of ice machines are super interesting. Although on this one, you can't really see much. I'm just trying to show you the ice, like, evaporator plates and where the water trickles down. So now we're just basically filling up the unit. We throw our cleaner in there, and then it does its own like cleaning over those plates. And while that's circulating the cleaning solution, I'm just gonna check this guy. It's just a little prep cooler, under counter prep cooler. It's an under counter cooler. All right, there's a bit of fluff on the outside, just like little cobwebbies, but the coil looks good. Just gonna brush away all those cobwebs anyway, and there was a spider in there. I was actually pretty surprised at how much dust came off of that coil. It looked pretty clean, but it must have been dusty in there. Anyway, that's done. So I'm gonna push that one back into its place. We also checked on their walk-in beer cooler. And then look at the secret door. Behind the bar. It's a little storage compartment that no one knows about. So don't tell anyone, okay? So the ice machine cleaner is still circulating. So we did a little bit of a tour around. Okay, back to business. Now that that cleaner is finished doing its job, I'm gonna rinse the entire bin with my turbo tank. Just get all the gunk and chemicals out of there and down the drain. And now we're making ice. We got one. <laughs> Yay, great success. <laughs> a few more items on our way out and look what a stunning day it is outside. Oh my goodness. Just wanna forget about work and play at the park. All right guys, well that's all the adventures I have for you on this episode of the HVAC Diaries HVAC Vlog. Thank you so much for joining me once again and I hope you guys have an excellent week and I look forward to seeing you all next time. See ya, bye.
Um, it was a, a York unit that has microchannel. I also used the turbo tank to clean two different types of. <laughs> All right, cool. Two different condenser coils on the roof, on a roof, not the roof. There is more than one roof. All right. Are you focused or not? Let's go. Let's go. The coils. One of them was a York. To climb out of this like doorway through a wall. That's still a doorway through a... doorways go through walls. Through a door, a hole in the wall. Okay. Got it done. That only took 17 takes. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet. We had to have somebody remove that ceiling for us and... Uh, why did that come out now? Nothing. That's uh, the the two beep sequence we're waiting for. Perfect. All I have for you this week on the HVAC Adventures HVAC vlog. HVAC Adventures? No, no. I'm the HVAC Diaries. I look forward to seeing you guys next week for another fun, full adventure full of. What? Another fun full adventure at vlog. Oh my gosh. And I look forward to seeing you guys. I have almost had that one. So close. Next time. See ya. Bye. It's getting more and more awkward. <laughs>